Um, it is possible, and it really annoys me that sometimes the fraction marks show up, and sometimes they don't, and I have no clue why. Obviously, when you see two, num two terms on top of one another and there's no line there, it's intended to be a fraction. Um, when I create these, I see them, and then when I post them to the web, they, they go away some reason, for some reason, occasionally. So it is possible to determine SH max from breakout data. Uh, so basically, we use the, the Kirsch equations or the simplified Kirsch equations at the wellbore wall combined with some type of logging data that, that where we observe breakouts and their width. And in fact, this WBO here is uh, the breakout width. in radians, okay? It could also be in, if you, instead of pi there, if you had 90 degrees, then, then that would, you could have it in degrees as well. So this is the width of the breakout as observed from some well logging, either caliper or ultrasonic, right? Uh, so if we have the breakout width, we can also measure, and we'll talk more about this when we talk about hydraulic fracturing, uh, but we can measure SH min from many frac tests, or essentially intentionally hydraulically fracturing the well, and then measuring and then allowing it to leak off and allow the fracture to close. We can get an estimate of SH min from that. So then if we, if we have SH min, if we have data on the, the breakout strength, uh, and then we also know the unconfined compressive strength of the rock, then we can find SH max. So SH max is the hardest of the three principal stresses to determine in magnitude, right? Because uh, the vertical we can estimate from the overburden stress, the SH min we can get from some type of hydraulic fracture test, uh, but then we have to infer SH max from that data and other information, okay? Uh, by the way, this also assumes a more Coulomb-type failure model. So if, if the rock behaves in such a way that more Coulomb's not actually a good model, then you, it's an additional complexity. Okay. So this is just a, a rough estimate. But, yeah. It's the simplest uh, model that does a decent job describing rock. Um, Again, before the break, I think in the two lectures, uh, certainly to the lecture right before spring break, if you haven't watched it yet, uh, we talk about other models. So there's like, I think the, the Hoke Brown model, uh, Drucker Prager, there's, there's uh, many other types of models that do a better job of realistically capturing the effects of rock. Uh, so I think the big one we talked about before spring break was pressure dependence. So with more Coulomb, the amount of hydrostatic pressure on the rock doesn't matter. You can continue to you can continue to apply hydrostatic pressure to infinity, and, and you'll never when you let it go, the rock, according to the Moore Coulomb model, the rock would just go back, just undeformed back to where it was elastically. But we know this is not physically true, right? If if I go and and and, and if I could actually apply hydrostatic pressure to a, a rock or basically anything to infinity there's always going to be, when I let it go, there's likely to be some permanent deformation, okay? And in rocks, there's certainly permanent deformation, and it's associated with collapse in pores. So as I squeeze the rock, I collapse the pores out of it. And then when I let it go, they don't rebound. They, they, they've actually been crushed out, so permanently. And I can do that without actually failing the rock in the sense of, like, you know, breaking the rock into two pieces. Like when you go and you do an unconfined compressive test, you know, you, you squeeze the rock and it splits into two pieces, right? But if you, if you just squeeze it hydrostatically, you can permanently deform it without actually failing it. And so in order to describe that type of behavior, you need a more sophisticated model that has an end cap or pressure dependence. But if you use this uh, model, then you can, you know, come, you can build up these kind of 
uh, these kind of data. So, the, I mean, this is just, uh, and, and I'm actually having to jump around a lot because I don't really like the way that it's presented in Zovac's book. So, um, basically, what we were talking about up to two slides ago was in chapter six, and now we're into chapter seven uh, here, where we're, you know, here using breakout data and SHMN from hydraulic fracturing to infer what SHMAX is. And so this chart, this uh, graph comes from chapter seven. <coughs> 